everybody, my name is Emma, this is Emma Rose in Books, and today I am filming my wrap up of everything I read in September, which was not very much, as I already said in my favourites video, um, uh, September was just this crazy month, because um, Lily, Lily the Limpet was launched, it, ooh, this came out on the 12th of September, so um, because I was obviously designing the book and reading over it and making sure everything was right and etc etc planning for the launch um, I was incredibly busy and then after the book was launched I did two events so I went to the Milton Keynes Breastfeeding Festival and I went to Parent Con and had stalls at those so I had a lot of prep work to do and obviously was away and just yeah everything has been really nuts up until a week ago basically it's chucking it down with rain so sorry if you can hear that in the background but there we are um so, yeah, I was really, really busy, so I haven't read all that much, sorry, sorry, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. But the last week I've been like crazy reading books, so October, I'll, I'll have lots to talk about, I hope. Um, so anyway, the first book that I read this month was, not that one, that one, sorry, <laughs> Indisputably Doris by Charlie Heathcote. This is the second book in the series, uh, which is the R Doris series. Um, there is a new one out called Doris Ahoy. If I'll make sure to link Charlie's channel below, but Charlie is an indie writer like I am. He has a booktube, authortube channel like I do. Um, and if you watch his videos, then you'll have an idea of what his humour is like. And that will give you an idea of whether you like these kind of books, because really you can almost hear him reading them. So I read Our Doris last year. Um, I believe that I bought our Doris, whereas with Indisputably Doris, Charlie kindly uh, gave me a copy, sent me a copy. So thank you very much, Charlie. Um, so, Indisputably Doris, well, I, I'll, do you know what, I'll describe both of them together because they, it's kind of easier that way. Basically, the books uh, follow a character called Doris Copeland, and Doris is in her 70s, and it's told from the perspective of her husband, who is called R. Arold. I'm not even going to try to do a northern accent, I'm sorry. I'm, st I'm just, like, excessively southern. Um, I do have northern people in my family, <laughs> but it would just be a monstrosity for me to try to do anything north of London. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's based in the north, and uh, in a place called Partridge Muse, I believe. And so, yeah, Doris um, is the central character. It's told from the perspective of her husband, and she gets involved in all these dramas. So there's things around, like, the WI and um, garden safaris. And I think was the first one, yeah, the first one was about a garden safari, and the second one is, like, the WI and bake sales and, and that kind of thing. Um, she is battling against a character called Pandra O'Malley, who they hate each other, and they're both battling to be the chair of the WI in Indisputably Doris. So that's the kind of thing that you're getting. It's like, it's like middle class drama, I suppose. Um, and like looking at the relationship between these people. Um, the thing that I really, really like about these books is that the main characters, so Doris and Harold and their friends, Edith and Alf, and lots of the other ancillary characters as well, are all elderly. And I think that there just aren't enough books or enough like creative things in general, you know, TV and film and, and just everything I think that puts the centre spotlight on elderly people, that they are the main characters. Um, and, and you know, usually it's kids or teenagers or adult, like young adults, but uh, as in, say young adults, like I, I think even you don't really get that many people over 50. Maybe I'm wrong in that and, and tell me below if you think I am, but I just think most most stuff, whether it's TV or it's film or it's um, or it's books, it's usually people who are up to sort of their late forties, and then you don't get much. Obviously, stuff does exist, but there just isn't as much. So when you see something like that, I just think that that's that's fantastic, and it's not some sad tale. It's just a really fun comedy. It's really warmly told. You know, it's a positive. Thing. And, I, and I just think that that is such a, a great thing to have. There should be more storytelling that has older people at the centre of the story. Um, it's I love the fact as well that everything is kind of very small town. I've lived most of, yeah, maybe, yeah, most of my life. I've lived in small places. <laughs> I have lived in cities. I've lived in Plymouth and I've lived in Canterbury. But for the most part, I, I have lived in, in small towns and villages. And that kind of drama that exists around, like, 
like the WI and, <laughs> and like all the, the little village organisations and that kind of thing. It is very real <laughs> and very alive. And so I like that. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of thing to expect. The other thing I enjoy actually is the cultural references. There are lots of really funny, there's a lot of like funny similes and a lot of them refer to things that are as I say, like cultural, like stuff that's in TV or whatever. One of the things that really made me laugh in Indisputably Doris, it's really hard to even explain why it was funny. And I, I might have taken a picture of it. But anyway, it was a reference to on the Great British Bake Off a couple of years ago. It was probably three or four years ago now when um, uh, the lady, I can't remember any of the names of the contestants now. It does say their names in here and instantly I knew what he meant. But there was a lady who took the ice cream of another guy out of the freezer and then the guy found it and threw it in the bin and there was like this massive emotional thing because Bake Off is just hysterical with like it's just cooking but it's so much drama but it's also so lovely because they don't put in all the like emotional they don't try and tug on your heartstrings or anything like that but it is just like hype like you really care whether that cake's gonna rise <laughs> anyway but no that really made me laugh because that was an instant that I really remember it and it, I, I remember like all the memes at the time and stuff just made me laugh so there's that kind of stuff in there um I liked our Doris better uh, it just I think for me Doris becomes a lot more acidic in this book and there were times where I was like now come on Doris this is too far you're just being a horrible person um, but this yeah I, they're, they're both lovely they're both just like they're like holiday reads almost in that they're just like easy to read they'll just make you chuckle you know um so yeah I just as I say for me this one edged it so I believe if, if I'm right that last year I gave this one five stars so I gave this one four stars it was a good book I enjoyed it just not quite as much as our Doris um, so yeah, basically what I would say is if you like kind of nostalgic comedy, stuff like Keeping Up Appearances, if you like that kind of thing, if and also if you like Charlie's kind of humour, um, then I would say that you would enjoy the Doris books, they're worth a go, um, if that's your kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that was good, that one, that one, that's the one I read. <laughs> um, so that was basically the first three weeks of September because I was just grabbing the odd moment to read a little bit of Doris. Um, and then once Lily's launch and all the stuff was over I was like I want to read so then I rediscovered Overdrive um which is that app that I use on my phone for audiobooks I basically I go through phases where I use it loads and then I kind of feel like I've read everything that I want to read or listen to everything that I want to listen and so I I like don't use it for a few months. It's probably been three or four months since I last used it. Anyway, um, so let me just open the app so that I can show you what I've been reading. Um, so the first thing that I read, ah, oh, I've not got it downloaded anymore. Um, Becoming by, oh, I can't show you. Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, and so I, 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 I put that on a wait list and the second it came in I started listening to it and I just could not stop. Firstly, it's read by Michelle Obama, which is just brilliant because you've just got her telling you her story. And sometimes I don't like it when the author reads an audiobook, but in this instance, I think, I think it's memoir, which is why I've made videos ages ago about how I was gonna make milk into an audiobook. That's still not totally forgotten, by the way. I kind of every now and again resurrect it and think, shall I do that? But anyway, I think when it's memoir, it really works to have the person read it to you. So I love that, she's got a lovely voice anyway. Um, but it was just so interesting because I think um, there were a few things. First of all, as I talked about in my favourites video, her, her sense of place, the way that she talks about Chicago, she's obviously very, very proud of her roots in Chicago. And the way she talked about it, the way she talked about like the weather and the sort of culture that she grew up around and all of that kind of stuff, it's, it was so, well told and visual and that I I just found it really fascinating because I love things that centre on place and although I've been to America I've been to um, LA and I've been to Utah and Nevada and Arizona that's it um, but I've not been to Chicago and it felt like that was something quite different and I think my perception of Chicago 
um, it, it w is not, I mean, I don't even really have much of a perception besides what you hear occasionally on the news. So to hear the story of somebody living there and growing up there and talking about how they feel about it and everything was just absolutely fascinating. I feel like I learned a lot. And then equally of her talking about living in the White House in the same way, that's something that only a few people are ever going to be able to tell the story of. So being able to have access to somebody being able to tell you what that's like. And there were things I just never even thought about, like the fact that they couldn't even open their windows. And you just think such a small thing of just being able to say, oh, it's a lovely day, let's open the window. You can't even do that. You can't. And of course you have so much. And like she says on it, she has so, so much. You know, you're being fed gourmet meals by top chefs and you've got all this luxury, but at the cost of your own freedom, you're not able to leave without security, um, you've, got, you, you've got no privacy basically and you don't have that spontaneity, that ability to be able to say, oh I'd just like to be able to go and have a cup of tea on the balcony, because she explains on it that if she goes out on the balcony, they have to like shut roads so that, you know, so it's things like that that just getting an insight to, I mean obviously you know a certain, to a certain extent the fact that you know if you've got if you're that high profile that you're going to have a, a limited privacy um and a limited ability to move about and all of that but it, i think it just um made it just so much clearer so there's that that kind of sense of place also the way that she talked about her family she's obviously a real family woman um it was just so lovely and i like her ethos the way that she thinks she's obviously so intelligent she holds very similar um uh like ethics to me i think in terms well like her, her beliefs in terms of i think education is so important she obviously does as well and in terms of the importance of children and children being able to be part of events rather than i mean in british culture and i'm sure it's similar in america there's very much that perception of just children are annoying and you know you, you want to escape from them, you don't, rather than no, make them part of things and have them as part of events and have, you know, welcome children. Uh, I, yeah, I, all of that I really loved. So I very much agreed with a lot of the things that she was saying. Um, I also found it very interesting to learn more about American politics because, um, so my husband's family are, uh, 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 he's half American and they, you know, obviously I pick up a lot and my husband is interested in American politics and so I picked up bits, but again, getting a, a better understanding of how how the president is elected and what the president does. I, you, obviously I know, do you, do you know what I mean though? Just to get that better idea of how politics work in America um, and what the first lady does. I just found all of that really, really interesting. So I felt like I learnt a lot by becoming from Michelle Obama. Um, I gained a huge amount of respect for her, for what she thinks, the way that she acted, the way that she was as first lady, um, and what she what she does now. And yeah, just just her. Her, I think she's fantastic. And yeah, I just felt like I learnt a lot. It felt very positive. Um, I was really interested in the fact that she just didn't particularly want Barack Obama to be president because of the effect that it would have on, on her, but that she supported him through it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just, it, it was lovely. It was really lovely. It was really interesting and I could not stop listening to it. Seriously, I listened to it in about three days and it's, it, it's like 20 hours long. I listened to it on um, 1.2 speed because... American people do speak slower than English people, and so you, I can stand like a little bit faster. <laughs> Any faster than that, it just sounded crazy, but it meant that I could get through it just a tad faster because she she does speak slowly, as a lot of Americans do, because the accent is just how it is, and it, it just um, is a bit a little bit slower. So there was that. I loved becoming. That was a five star read for me. It's one of the best things I've read this year. I was fascinated. My husband was so sick of it. Dinner time. I was like, Did you know that? Michelle Obama did this, or me asking him questions about American politics, or do you remember when this happened? And, do you, and he was like, what are you sharp about? I was just really fascinated by it and like looking up loads of stuff about politics at the time. And anyway, so yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, then I've read one more book since then, and that was actually an ebook, which is so unlike me to read an ebook. I hardly ever do, but it was 
oh, you can't probably see that very well, when Hitler stole Pink Rabbit. Now I talked about this on my favourites that I listened to Judith Kerr, again on my favourites instead of don't, they were calling her Judith Carr on Desert Island Discs but it's spelt Kerr but she never personally said her name, so I don't know whether it was the presenter saying it wrong or the presenter saying it right and it's me saying it wrong, so I don't know. But the lady who wrote The Tiger Who Came to Tea and the lady who wrote the Mork books. And so obviously she's a massive part of many people's childhood. My, my children read her books. She's really well known. Um, and I listened to her on Desert Island Discs and I had no idea that she and her family had fled Germany um, when Hitler came to power, so literally as Hitler was elected they had to run because her dad had ri written stuff against Hitler and the fact that the day after they left the Nazis turned up to confiscate their passports, um, the, like the Nazi police, um, and so you know they only just got out and I was it, the, her story is amazing she was such on the interview was such a warm person just so the way that she saw life and she was so grateful for everything that she she had and the opportunities she'd had and I don't she was just lovely and she talked about this book I'd never heard of it um so there we are <laughs> I don't know who I probably should have but I hadn't um which is uh, it's her story of what what happened to her basically when they fled Germany. So the story takes you from just before they leave Germany to um, as she's about to come to the UK basically. And it's a children's book. And I found that so interesting because she's writing about things that are obviously really heavy like, you know, Jews having to flee Germany and um, she even mentions concentration camps, but she describes them as like a special, I can't remember how she says it, but they're like a, a, a kind, a kind of prison or so, I can't remember how she says it, but it's in such friendly language that I think a, a child wouldn't question it, or like wouldn't, wouldn't want to know more, it just kind of explains what, what she said, if that makes sense. Um, basically she's talking about something that historically is just obviously awful but she is telling it in a child friendly way and I think that's amazing um, and it's told from her perspective as the well, I mean she she is written in third person but it's from the perspective of Anna who is her um, and she how a child sees it, like how a child feels about having to leave their home and rather than the politics of the whole thing it's just it's about the child's experience of like going to different schools and learning new languages and meeting new people and and it's fascinating it focuses on the little things which in so many ways is more interesting um, and it's yeah, it was very, very interesting. I think the only part of it that did make me wince a little bit in terms of thinking of my children reading it um, is that there's references to um, a suicide. And so I don't know... I th that, that would be the only bit that for me... I maybe only like my older... Like my son who's nine. I'd let him read it, I think. But that, yeah, other than that, everything else considering the subject material was handled amazingly. Um, it's just really beautiful, beautifully written. It reads like almost like an Enid Blyton or a, yeah, like that, like the, almost like the twins at St. Clair's or something, the way they talk about school and it just, yeah, that kind of writing style. Um, but really, really interesting. I had no idea that she had this experience as, as a young girl and yeah, amazing, gives me a whole new respect for the lady, who obviously is this amazing children's writer. So I'd really recommend it. I, it was very, very good. I haven't given that a star rating yet. Um, what do I think? Four or five stars? Uh, I don't know. One of those. I'll think about it. It was very good. <laughs> Maybe five? Is it five? Four and a half. I'm going to go with four and a half right now. And uh, you can go to my Goodreads to see what I finally... In fact, no, I must have already reviewed it. I think I gave it four stars. But it was like a, a yeah, four and a half for me, I would say. Um, so that's everything that I read. A really good reading month. I enjoyed all of those books and would recommend 
any and all of them. Uh, so I'm reading several books at once, which is just unheard of. And like I said, the fact I read an ebook, I, I generally don't. I'm not a big fan. But what I've realised, I sometimes go places and I've forgotten to take a book. But if I have an ebook on my phone, I always have, nearly always have my phone. So uh, that that was my thinking. So um, plus having audiobooks, I love audiobooks. So at the moment, I'm listening to Ready Player One which is great. I'm basically just listening to audiobooks when I would usually be listening to podcasts because I've just sort of changed like that. I'm also reading, uh, oh, where is it? Up uh, there. I'm also reading Sky, which I've been reading for a while. <laughs> um, so I should finish this in the next few days, actually. Um, yeah, that's what I'm reading at the moment. And hopefully I'll have read Dane's books and I've got some other things on the go. So now that I'm kind of back in the swing of reading, hopefully October, I will have lots to report back on. Anyway, I hope that you all have read some good things. Let me know if you've read any of the books I've talked about in this video. Let me know what you've read, if you've read anything good this month um, or, or maybe not so good. But let me know what you've been reading and what you think. Please like if you did and subscribe for more videos about reading, about writing, bookish things. And I will see you all for my next video soon. Take care.